Hello, and welcome to Simple Man Sermons, the preachings of a simple man called by God to share the good news of Jesus Christ. This should be a revelation to no man. God is smarter than you. God is wiser than you. God knows more than you know. He has information that you don't have. And again, that should come as a revelation to no man. However, sometimes I think it's good to be reminded of this truth. To be put in our rightful place. And we might have some cultural connotations to that. Put somebody in their place. And we might relish in it when we see somebody else put in their place. When they're acting a way they shouldn't act. Or doing something. Or pretending to know something they don't know. And they get put in their place. And we kind of relish in that, right? But we don't like it so much when we get put in our place. We get embarrassed when we get humbled. But sometimes it's good to be humbled. And it's good to be humble. Remember that God does not see the way that we see. God sees the end from the beginning. I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. I say, my purpose will stand, and I will do all that I please. Isaiah 46.10 I make known the end from the beginning. God doesn't see the way that we see. We see a very narrow picture. From Isaiah 55. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now, by God's grace, the sermon came to me the other day when I was out hiking. Hiking in the woods in the wilderness, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows us his handiwork. There is a, what, you know, theologians call general revelation, but it's basically just that we see God in creation. We see his handiwork. It's not some random evolution, pond scum evolution garbage. It's it's a design. The designer is God. We see God reflected in the creation. That's general revelation. Anyway, as I was enjoying the beauty of God's creation, this thought came to me as I was following, uh, scouting some new area, looking at sign, elk tracks, deer tracks. It occurred to me that almost never does a natural path follow a straight line. Almost never does a natural path follow a straight line. You see, a lot of people today live in cubes. They live in a square box and they get in a mobile square box and drive to another box. Straight hallways, straight lines, straight staircases. But go out in nature and find me a 90 degree angle. If you do, it'll stand out because there are very, very few. We design our highways and freeways and stuff to go on a pretty direct path. But not so in nature. If you look at a natural path of a any a river, water, what could be simpler than water going from higher elevation to lower elevation? But it almost never goes in a straight line. It twists and turns. It has falls. It has eddies. It has pools. But God's wisdom is revealed in even this. If you look at the water cycle that God uses to sustain life on this earth, it is a beautiful, beautiful design and rhythm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. If you look at the path of an elk, Or a deer. Deer are probably more common. So let's pick deer. If you look up to the top of a mountain, you're like, it's right there. And I've learned this the hard way many times. You think, oh, the most direct route, the easiest way to get to the top of that mountain is to just go straight. And you'll probably find before long that you will start following that deer trail or that elk trail. Because although it doesn't make sense to you at the time, 
you find that if you just follow it, it's the easier path. Although it doesn't make a lot of sense. It's got all these twists and turns and then try to go your own way. You hike and hike and hike just to get to a spot and you realize, wait, you can't cross here. There's a giant chasm that you cannot pass. You end up backtracking and sooner or later you probably find yourself on that deer elk trail that you would be further ahead if you just stayed on the path doesn't look like it's not a straight line it doesn't look direct to you but it is often the most efficient path a deer or an elk is not as smart as a man but god designed them to be efficient and useful for what they do we see that order we see that by design they almost never go in a straight line in a straight path what would make sense to us but if you will observe and spend time in that environment you will see the wisdom of god's creation reflected in the natural paths we see and i could pick any number of stories i'm just going to focus on a few stories in the bible and try and put yourself in in the moment, in these people's lives, these were real people in the Bible. This is not some garbage mythology story. This is real. These were real people's lives. Noah was a real man. Imagine being Noah. Now, if you read your Bible and you know your Old Testament, you'll know that it had never rained. Up until this point, it had never rained. It says a dew came out on the ground, watered the ground. God comes to Noah and says, Build a boat. Build an ark. You think that that completely made sense to Noah at the time? We have the benefit of kind of knowing the whole story. But looking back on that, we see the wisdom of it. The people that weren't following God, they didn't see the wisdom of God. They didn't hearken unto the wisdom of God. In the New Testament, it, when Jesus talks about the end times, it says, As in the days of Noah. As people ate and drank and were given in marriage they were just doing their own thing like let's just live life the way that we want it makes the most sense to us and look what happens when you don't follow God it may not seem like it makes a lot of sense at the time but who's smarter God or you Noah listened even though it may not have made a lot of sense he listened he walked in faith not by sight if we look at Abraham, imagine being Abraham, right? He is called away from his family, from everything that he knows to a land he's never been. And again, we see the, we know the end from the beginning. We see all this, but God tells him, your name is no longer Abram. Your name has been Abraham. You're a father of many nations. He didn't have any kids. Even when God said he would give him a son, it was a lot of years until he had a son. Do you think Abraham understood what was being done completely when God told him to take his son, his only son, Isaac, whom he had waited on, he was an old man at this point, and take him and sacrifice him and kill him? Do you think that Abraham saw this clear linear path and it all made sense to him? No, right? And we kind of see this because he's kind of thinking about this and he thinks that God can even raise his son from the dead which of course he can but that wasn't the plan but the fact is that Abraham had faith now we look back and we see that Abraham was willing to give up his only son Isaac and this is a beautiful picture of Jesus Christ on the cross God didn't actually make him give up his son but he was willing to give his son his one and only son to listen to God God does give his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. Right? That makes sense looking back on that. What a beautiful revelation. But Abraham didn't. He walked by faith. He, he trusted that God had information that he didn't have, that God was God, and he trusted him. He walked by faith and not by sight. He didn't need it all to make sense. He followed even when it didn't make sense. Look at the twists and turns in David's life right and David was anointed king and after that he's running hiding in caves working for the Philistines when he's been anointed king of Israel 
We know that story and how that plays out because we have the book. God's given us that beautiful instruction manual for life. But David at the time when he's hiding in a cave, being persecuted, people are hunting him down to kill him, literally hiding in a cave. He's gone from supposedly anointed king to literal caveman, literally living in a cave on the run for his life. You think that he understood all that at the time, what was going on? But he followed God. God sees the end from the beginning. We look at Samson, one of the judges. We look at the fact that he was kind of chosen to deliver Israel from the Philistines. Now, we can admire Samson's strength and some things about Samson, but he messed up a lot and he didn't listen very well many of the times. And even David, he didn't listen some of the times. But how do you think, do you think it seemed like a straight path for Samson when he was having his eyes put out? Remember, he had his eyes put out. He was blinded. But here's the thing. When he had his eyesight, he was always chasing after foreign women. He was always going off the path. He was doing things he ought not have been doing. He was focused on the wrong things. Though he could actually naturally see, he was blinded to what he was supposed to be doing. After he became blind, then he saw more clearly God's purpose to destroy the Philistines. And he put out his arms and he took down the temple, that wretched pagan temple, and killed the Philistines. Although, probably didn't seem like it made a lot of sense when he was getting his eyes put out. It made sense later when we look back on it because he needed that. Because when he could see, he was blinded to what he should have been doing. And when he became blind, he could really see and actually focus more than on the natural world and on the real world. On what was really important, on God's plan for him to destroy the Philistines. Because God is wiser than us. God is smarter than us. God has information that we do not have, that we are not privy to. We are finite beings. You remember the story of Job when he's got all these these things rattling around in his head and God appears to him and says, Why don't you explain to me how all these natural processes work, the Leviathan? Why don't you tell me how the sun and the firmament and the earth and all that? Tell me how all that works there, Job. He says, Behold, I am insignificant. What can I reply to you? There if, if we take a step back from those individual stories and look back at the macro, the story of creation, of the history of us, the history of Earth, the actual history, not the garbage stuff that most people are taught today, but the actual history of the world. That God created that he made Adam, Adam and Eve. If we take a step back and look at the macro, there's all these twists and turns. But we see wisdom of God he looking back on it the twists and the turns they go from creation to the garden well let's take a big step back to the macro from the garden to the cross there's a lot of twists and turns in there to us but not to God God knew the entire time he sees the end from the beginning what seems like twists and turns to us is a beautiful path that God had laid out for mankind. Just like you go back to nature, whether it's a small path of a deer winding up the side of a mountain or a raging river going down to the ocean thousands of miles away from small to large, it all makes sense to God. The entire overarching story of mankind makes sense to God. He has all the information. He sees the end from the beginning. Take it back down to the micro, to your own life. Likely, if your life is like my life, there are many twists and turns. There are many times where it just doesn't make sense. Why am I here? Why am I in this place? Why shouldn't I be doing something else? Shouldn't I be doing something more? Why has this thing happened to me? And of course we have those questions. And I'm like a pretend like I don't have those questions. Of course I do. Just 
as likewise many of the patriarchs, many of these stories in the Bible. These men likely had questions they likely didn't understand at the time. Like look at the Psalms of David, look at when he cries out to God. But God has a plan for your life too. We can get off the path, we can get off the path like David, we can really get off the path like Samson, so we really got to get corrected. But what may seem like pointless twists and turns to us, because we're so focused on what's right in front of us, or we're so focused on the top of the mountain, we don't, we don't trust in God's natural processes. For, we often, I think, lose sight of that God knows more than us. And of course we know that, but again, it's good to be put in our place. It may not seem like a straight path to you, but it's the best path if we follow God every step of the way. Remember, remember that Christ did not promise an easy straight path. In fact, he promised the opposite. He said, well, that's a good verse, so let's just read it in toto. Actually, we'll look at two verses. Uh, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Many just do whatever ever they want to do because it makes sense to them. Few actually follow what God wants them to do in life, sadly. It says right there, few. And narrow and difficult. Say an easy, smooth highway. Right? I've heard it said before, I didn't come up with this, but it's a highway to hell and a stairway to heaven. Right? You know. It, although it may look easy at the time to be cruising down the highway, it's not going anywhere good. You don't want to be on the highway. You don't want to be on the broad road. You want to be on the narrow, difficult path. You get to the top of that mountain, walking in faith, and you look around, you realize it was, it was a beautiful, beautiful plan all along. Because God knew the whole time. He knew every step of the way. He knew every rock, every bramble, every creek. Every watering hole, every beautiful thing along the way. That it was good for you to be on that path, to follow God. Now, sometimes we get off the path in life. And sometimes, and I've done, I've seen this reflected when I'm out in the wilderness hunting or hiking or whatever. And I think, that's got to be easier. And I go do my own thing. I often in life have to learn the same lessons over and over again. To be humble, to trust in God. It may be frustrating at the time, but again, we've got to trust that he knows what's best for us, that he has a good path, even though it might be frustrating at the time. Think of, you know, a long canoe trip down a river, and you're getting frustrated because you're getting caught up in weeds and willows and rocks, and you got to stop and camp for the night, and you're just frustrated because you're not making time. And then early the next day, you come across some giant rapids and a waterfall. And you just think, wow, I'm really glad I didn't have to go through that at night. I might die. Because at night, you're going to get a lot closer and not be able to pull out in time. Or something probably that more people do than that is, uh, you know, you're going down the highway and you're making good time. And you get a flat you get a flat tire and you're so frustrated. Why did this happen to happen to me? Why do I have this flat tire? Why do I have this? Why do I have that? And although you might not even realize it, perhaps, and sometimes you just get a flat tire. But perhaps that flat tire actually saved you from getting into a horrible accident. And how often does God save, and we can't know the answer to this, right? Because it, the whole premise of the question shows that we don't know. How often does God save us from something that we don't even know we were about to get into? And we're upset about some little minor inconvenience when God literally saved us from a catastrophe so although it's hard to remember let's try and remember to thank god for doors slammed in our face because there was something bad in that room to thank god for the locked doors to thank god for the twists and the turns that kept us out of a giant chasm we might have fallen into to thank god for his righteous path Remember, and I know we all know it, but remember, God knows more than you know. His ways are better than our ways. His thoughts are better than our thoughts, higher than our thoughts. We have limited information. God knows the end 
from the beginning. So let's show some reverence. Let's stand in awe and have some godly fear and respect for the creator of the universe. One who has a path for all of mankind from Genesis to Revelation and who has a plan for your life. Again, didn't promise you an easy path. He never promised you an easy path. But he has a path for you. Walk in faith, not by sight. He knows more than you know. He has information that you don't have. He is God in heaven, and we are here on earth. We are but mortal men. He is an almighty, unchanging, all-seeing, all-powerful, all-wise God. Let us remember that and trust in Him. Thanks for listening, and have a blessed day.